thermostats are useful pieces of equipment, there's no doubt about that. They can be used in a wide range of applications, such as controlling the heat lamps for reptiles, maintaining a constant temperature for incubators, turning on fans automatically when it gets too hot, or serving as a backup kill switch in case an aquarium heater malfunctions. I've been using thermostats for as long as I've kept reptiles, but recently I've decided to make one for my fish tank. It is actually quite risky to rely solely on the built-in thermostat in aquarium heaters. They can malfunction and overheat the fish. Unlike reptiles, the fish can't just get away from the heat source, so without a backup thermostat to cut the power to the heater, it can actually be quite dangerous. There are many good quality thermostats on the market these days, and most are very reliable and packed with different functions. I have a few of those and I do highly recommend them, but they are also quite expensive, with many of them over $100 or even over $300. So if you need many of them, or just can't justify spending so much on one, you can consider making your own. I'll be showing you how I made a digital on-off thermostat that does heating and cooling for less than $40. All the parts should be readily available online, and there's no soldering involved in this build. Only a few basic tools are required. First thing I did was to measure the size of the thermostat so I know what size opening I need to cut in the plastic box. I then measured the dimensions of the box so that I can position the opening in the center. Then I transferred those measurements onto the box using a marking gauge. I drilled holes in the four corners of the rectangle I marked out, but I made sure to stay away from the edges as you can always file it back later. To cut the opening, I used a coping saw. The blade was inserted through one of the holes and I just cut along the lines I marked out. Again, I made sure not to cut too close to the lines in case I take too much material off. After that's done, I tidied up the opening with a file, gradually extending the opening to the marked lines until the thermostat fits into the opening snugly. I used a single length of extension cord for all the cables and wiring in this build. The cable can be cut and stripped with a utility knife if that's the only two you have, but it will be a lot easier to do this with a wire stripper. I've cut the extension cord down into three segments, one for the power supply, one for the heating outlet, one for the cooling outlet, and the extra lengths are used for the wiring inside the box. I drilled three holes at the back of the box for the power supply and the two outlets. I made sure to keep the holes evenly spaced out and centered. The holes are then expanded to the right size using a step drill bit to fit the cable glands. After threading the cables through the glands, it was time for wiring. In order to prepare the wires, they will need to be stripped. Here I showed how I use a utility knife to do that. First, I connected all of the ground wires together with a spring lever wire connector and moved that out of the way. Then I connected the neutral wires together using the same method. The neutral wire from the power supply is split th into three ways. One for powering the thermostat, one for the cooling outlet, and one for the heating outlet. The live wire from the power supply is also split three ways. One for powering the thermostat, and the other two is connected to the thermostat so that the heating and cooling outlets can be switched on and off by the thermostat. 
and the circuit is finally completed by connecting the live wire from the cooling and heating outlets to the thermostat. I almost forgot to add the temperature sensing probe. It requires another hole to be drilled into the box. Since I don't have a cable gland to hold it in place, I tied a knot on the wire in the inside of the box so that the probe can't be accidentally yanked out. The probe is connected to the thermostat by the designated port just like the other wires. Now that all the wiring is done, it's just a matter of organizing the wires and securing the thermostat to the box with these orange tabs before closing the box up. The last thing to do is to add a plug to the cooling outlet. Since the heating outlet is black, I chose a white plug for cooling so I can easily tell them apart. And just like that, I have an accurate and reliable thermostat to use. The different brands of STC thermostats might have slightly different configurations, so it is best to refer to the instruction manual, but this is how I program mine. I hold the settings button for 3 seconds, and it will show all the settings that I can change. I click up or down until it's showing the setting that I'm hoping to change. The first setting I'm doing is the temperature. This will be the temperature that the thermostat will work to achieve, whether it is by cooling or heating. I've set mine to 20 degrees. I click the power button to save the setting, and now I'm back to the home display. Now it's showing the actual temperature that the probe is sensing, but this time, the light is indicating that heating is on, as the thermostat is wanting to bring the temperature from 16 degrees to 20 degrees. The next thing I could change is to choose whether to display the temperature as Celsius or Fahrenheit. I've set mine to Celsius. CA stands for calibration. I would use this setting if I know my probe is reading a temperature that is consistently warmer or colder than the actual temperature that I'm trying to achieve. I'll leave it at zero for most of my applications. PT is the compressor delay. Some devices are not designed to be switched on and off constantly. They may need to be rested for a while before turning on, or you might need to run it constantly for some time before switching it off. This is the setting that allows you to set a time delay to prevent damage to those devices. I don't use anything like that, so mine is set to zero. Finally, the DS setting is the different set value. This is like the temperature tolerance of the thermostat. The higher the value, the wider the temperature will be allowed to fluctuate. This is quite a useful setting to play around with. For example, setting this temperature to the lowest, which is 0 0.3 degrees, means that my temperature would be held between 19.7 degrees to 20.3 degrees. But, but what this also means is that there will be a lot of fine tuning so that the heating and cooling will be frequently turned on and off to keep this temperature constant. And this might shorten the lifespan of some devices. I set mine to 0 0.3 for my fish tank, since it's just as a backup thermostat acting as a kill switch, but for my reptiles, I would set it somewhere between 2 to 3 degrees, as a bit of temperature fluctuation is natural and won't harm them. To finish this video, let's see it on action. I'm connecting a heat lamp to the heating outlet and a computer fan to the cooling outlet. The temperature is currently 16 degrees, so that the heat lamp will be turned on to bring it up to 20 degrees. Once it reaches 20 degrees, the heat lamp automatically turns off, and once it reaches 20.3 degrees, the computer fan comes on. And when the temperature goes back down to 20 degrees, the fan turns off. And when it drops even further to 19.7 degrees, 
the heat lamp turns back on. For $40, I've made a very versatile thermostat that I can use in many different ways. It's not a bad idea to make an extra one so you can have a spare thermostat for when you need to set up something urgent like a hospital tank. Thanks for watching.